in the previous video, please record it here. In the previous video, we did stability analysis on a transfer function with this characteristic equation, okay, the parameter k. We set up the Ruth array and looked at this first column and determined what k's were required so we get all positive entries in this uh, first column here. Certainly k had to be greater than zero and the algebra on this guy said it had to be greater than 7.5. Now, what if it's exactly equal to 7.5? You'll get one here, a five here, a zero here, and a 7.5 here. Three positives, but a zero. Well, a zero in that column means at best marginal stability. And I'm gonna say kind of a spoiler alert, if, if the all zero row is the S1 row, you will get marginal stability if, if that's the only all zero row, at least coming down from the top. So, and you know what that means? Well, that's gonna mean a single pair of complex, actually imaginary poles right on the imaginary axis. Let's see what happens. If, if, we, if we put in k equals 7.5, this would be the Ruth array. You get a row of all zeros. And that's a special case that I'm gonna cover in more detail a few charts away from here. In general, a row of all zeros could indicate sustained oscillation, meaning marginally stable, or it could mean instability. And my spoiler alert is, if it's only in the S to the one row and not some row above it, um, you'll get marginal stability. In my courses, I kept things simple. Any all zero row was the S, one, S to the one row. And I told my students, they could assume marginal stability. So that if I ask them for sustained oscillation, I'll talk about that in a second, they could assume there would be sustained oscillation. And when you have poles right on the imaginary axis, but they're simple, not repeated, you'll get sustained oscillation related to the, that pair of poles. You have no other poles in the right, you have no other poles in the right half of the complex plane, that's the worst that will happen. We get sustained oscillation, meaning marginal stability. Now we can ask, what is the frequency of that sustained oscillation? Let me tell you how to calculate that. You're going to need the auxiliary, auxiliary equation, auxiliary equation. That is taken from the row just above the all zero row. S to the one was the all zero row. We get the auxiliary equation from the row above it. What does it mean? This is the S squared row. So the power associated with this term is S squared. We skip a power. The power associated with this term is S to the zero. So this is the auxiliary, auxiliary equation. 5s squared plus 7.5. Here's a fact. The roots of the auxiliary equation are also roots of the characteristic equation. So this tells you where poles of the overall system are going to be. Uh, how do we solve for the frequency? That s equal to j omega alpha omega. Do that, S squared equals minus omega squared. Put in minus omega squared here for S squared. This solve for omega. Omega squared equals 7.5 over five, which is three halves. Omega, which is the frequency in radians per second of the sustained oscillation with that K equals 7.5. Okay, that's how you find sustained oscillation. 
frequency of sustained oscillation. Here's another example. In the system below, what's the range of K sub D that'll make the closed loop system stable? And what value of K sub D will cause sustained oscillation? And what's the frequency of it? Here we're not given the characteristic equation or the transfer function directly. We need the closed loop transfer function. And all we really need is the closed loop characteristic equation. How do you get that? Well, the simple uh, algebra is it's this denominator times this guy's denominator, which is just one, plus the product of the two numerators, 18 k sub ds. That's what this is. Find terms, here's our characteristic polynomial. There it is again. Set up our root array, I'll have one, 2 plus 18 KD, and that's it. 3, 18, and that's it. Do my root array, I'll have 6. Well, 3 times 2 divided by 3 is 2. 3 times 18 divided by... Kind of did some algebra ahead of time. I must have did it in my head, but I, I don't always do that reliably. Okay, it, trust me, it's this. Um, pull down the 18, and use that little trick. So what we need is for this guy to be greater than zero. Two, 18 over three is six. Two minus six is minus four, solve for that. K sub D needs to be greater than two ninths. That's, that's the range of stability or the range of KD to assure stability. Okay, what value of K sub D would cause the state oscillation? The value that makes this an all zero row, which would be two ninths. If K sub D equals two ninths, we get this for the auxiliary equation. Minus three omega squared. Yeah, we just need to look at this. This is 3s squared plus 18 is the auxiliary equation. Put in minus omega squared for s squared, you get this. Omega squared equals 18 over 3, which is 6. So omega is square root of 6, radians per second. Uh, one more. Well, Okay. Here's the system, do three different things. Find the relationship for K and KI for stability, do the sustained oscillation analysis, and also find a case of ice of the steady state error to a ramp is 1%. Again, we're not given the closed loop characteristic equation, but it's gonna be Closed loop characteristic equation is going to be the product of the denominators times the product of the numerators plus the product of the numerators. Here's, here's what this guy is. So it's denominator is just S, its numerator is this. Product of the denominators is then S times S plus one, S plus two. And the product of the numerators is KS plus KI times one. It all equals this. Here's the characteristic equation. Set up the Ruth array. I'm not going to do that arithmetic. You get this. So certainly K sub i needs to be greater than zero. And if you do this algebra, it says K must be greater than this, some function of K sub i. So that's the relationship for stability. For sustained oscillation, that's when you get all zeros in this S1 row for k, um, the k exactly equals one third k sub i minus two, then you go up to this auxiliary equation, which is three s squared plus k i zero, you plug in omega minus omega squared for s squared, solve for omega again. 
is that. Now, eddy state error analysis. This is a unity feedback system. We had a shortcut for computing um, the steady state error for unity feedback systems that only required the forward path transfer function. You get which transfer function is needed for what? For stability analysis, you need the closed loop transfer function. This guy, because it's unity feedback and we're doing steady state error analysis, you just need the forward path gain transfer function. Um, and it is this, you see that S there, we've done this type of stuff first. That's a type one system, this G sub naught, get rid of this S, evaluate the rest, S equals zero, we get KI over two, the error to a ramp is one over that. This is all under steady state error analysis, a previous video. There's our steady state error to a ramp, it's gotta be 1%. We solve for k sub i, we say it must be 200. And if it's also got to be stable, then k has got to be greater than 64 and 2 thirds or that k sub i. That was a little exercise to show you, look out for which transfer function or characteristic equation you need. Whole closed loop thing or sometimes just the forward path. Okay, I'll save these special cases for one more video.